We've been doing some scanning with Nmap at this point. We've done some basic scanning, some advanced scanning. We've even written some scripts. And I think it's useful to just take a look at the actual network layer details of these different scan types and how they actually behave on the wire. Now, the one I really wanted to show was the idle scan or the zombie scan. And the reason for that is because it's not a straightforward scan. So you can see here that this packet here on the very top where we're sourcing a message to 192.168.1.1. This is where we're actually probing the zombie. And you can see that we're sending a sin ACK. The reason for sending a sin ACK is to make sure that we get a reset in return. Since a sin ACK without the server actually sending a sin to us would be not really illegal, but it certainly wouldn't be an expected message. And so the system is going to respond with a reset. So you'll see actually several of these messages. And the reason for replying with these messages is because we want to see the behavior of the ID field right here. So the IP identification field, we want to see what the behavior is based on several interactions. So we're sending a SYNAC here, we get a reset back, and you can see the identification field is 11620, and the next one is 11621, and the next one is 11622. So what we're seeing here is an incremental behavior with the IP ID field. So then what we do is we send a whole bunch of SYNACs, and we continue checking the IP ID field based on that behavior, then what we can do is we can send messages to the actual target right here, which is dot 39. So we're sending out a message from dot one to dot 39, and we send several of those. And then eventually we'll send a message to dot one to see what the behavior of the IP ID field is. So right here, we've got a message that we are sending from our IP address to the zombie host or the idle host. And then we check the IP ID field right here, 11641. And of course, based on that, we can determine whether the ports that we have checked are open or not. So we continue sending these, these spoofed source messages and periodically we go and check the IP ID field and based on what we expect the IP ID to be, we can make determinations about ports being open. So the other one I wanted to show you was the script that we had run with using the Nmap scripting language. So there is a message in here where we check for the location of a particular page. And actually the first thing here is we check to see whether we get a 404. So there's a message where we are requesting a page that shouldn't be there. And you can see right here, we get an HTTP response and the message is 404 not found right there. So that's the response code that we've got. So we know we've got a server that will actually generate a 404. And then what we do is we issue the head request here to see whether this particular page exists or not. And of course we get a 200 okay to that. Now prior to that, there would have been messages from us to port 80, which is the HTTP port. And that would be to see whether the server actually existed. And this is the message right here. So this is where we check to see whether that port is actually listening or not. And because we got a response, then we actually go ahead with the requests. 
So that's what a couple of different scan types look in Nmap. And it's always useful to go just check and see what's actually happening on the network and not just what the application tells you. It's a really great way of understanding what's actually happening by being able to look at the packet by packet details of any particular action, particularly when you're talking about scans and particularly when you're talking about something like an idle scan where we're using spoofed messages and a zombie host.